Hello, and welcome to another edition of the Archer Point Retail Video Blog Series. Today, we're going to start off a series of short blogs that have to do with nav integration with Amazon, or more specifically, Amazon.com Marketplace Web Services. Our demo today will include what's possible. Uh, it will be a quick demonstration of retri uh, retrieving Amazon orders that are placed on Amazon.com and processing them into division sales orders. Let's think a little bit about our user story. Um, so our company, my company, sells products on Amazon.com using both the AFN and MFN networks, fulfillment networks. Uh, those are more commonly known as FBA and FBM. So let's talk a little bit more about what each of those are. For FBA, this is sold by my company, but fulfilled by Amazon. This is done through inventory that is uh, sent to Amazon by my company. And Amazon is uh, acting as a 3PL here. But when an order is placed on Amazon.com, Amazon will fulfill it. We can look at uh, an Amazon.com listing and see the sold by my company and fulfilled by Amazon to know that this is using the FBA fulfillment network. So when we have an FBM uh, order, uh, an FBM would mean that we are sold and fulfilled by my company. So we have just listed our product on Amazon.com and when a customer purchases it, Amazon lets us know my company know, and then we ship it to the end user customer. So let's talk a little bit about the, the integration uh, that we'll see in the demo. So this integration brings in Amazon order data into some new tables in division that we are calling sales channel orders. And from there, we can uh, have rules uh, that are user defined that allow us to continue on with that data and create nav sales orders. And in the case of FBA orders, we might just want to have them take it all the way through the nav sales order posting. So let's take a look at the integration within nav. Uh, first of all, I'd like to talk about this database a little bit. Uh, so we actually have a nav 2016 database. And although it has items and general ledger accounts, customers, vendors, etc., it does not have any transactions in, in it whatsoever. We've uh, um, deleted all those, so we're starting fresh. We can look at sales orders, see that there are no sales orders, no sales order archives. So let's go back to the integration. This is one of the tables that we've added uh, that define sales channels. Today's blog is going to be concerned just with uh, Am the Amazon sales channels, although, as mentioned earlier, uh, it is designed to be able to handle uh, many sales channels and be a central repository as to how you deal with, with sales made by an external channel. So just a couple of quick things about what's on the definition of a sales channel. One is that we have an inventory location. So this is a nav inventory location that we called FBA, and this represents the inventory that would be at the Amazon warehouse when we're fulfilling it by Amazon. We also uh, have a number series that we can uniquely assign when we get around to creating these sales orders. So for the FBM, our fulfilled by merchant, we are fulfilling this out of one of our warehouses that we will physically ship the, uh, the item to the customer. And it has its own unique um, number series when it comes to uh, creating sales orders. So let's, uh, what will happen when we run the integration is that that information will come under the structure we call channel orders. Uh, channel orders have the information, the header and lines of each order as we get that from the external sales channel. So we have our uh, API sets, and this is how we communicate with the different sales channels. Uh, this one is defined as Amazon. Uh, it 
has uh, some automation that can run on a scheduled basis. We're going to force it to run right now. Uh, however, I just want to mention that since we do not have any transactions in the database, we have set the essentially the last run date to be 6 p.m. today on the uh, 11th of December. And when it goes out and asks Amazon for orders, uh, Amazon will re return anything that has changed, which includes new orders, since the last run date. So let's go ahead and run, run that automation now. So the first time it calls it, uh, it takes it a little bit longer to, to go through the, uh, the internet process, but we should see now it's posting the response and now it's processing orders. So that was uh, Amazon sends back 100 orders at a time. So now we've gotten 200 orders and then 84. Shouldn't say that we've gotten 284 orders. We've gotten what Amazon has told us about are 284 hours that have changed. So now the, the cycle that it's going through is that it's um, because of an automation rule that we have in place, it is uh, uh, going and getting the lines that are associated with those orders from Amazon, building a sales order, and actually in the case of FBA, uh, shipping and posted. I, I think I need to explain that a little better. So let me run another instance of NAV. And I'll just show you the autumn, the rule that it's following. So we have this, uh, the ability to customize what it does when it gets this information back. So it says for channel FBA, uh, when the Amazon or the channel status says that it is shipped. So an FBA order would be something that Amazon is shipping on our behalf when they say it is ship, shipped and we do not have a corresponding NAV sales order that it should auto create the sales order. It should release it and it should auto post it. So we could uncheck these boxes if we didn't feel comfortable with the automation doing this all at once. But when you think about uh, this is a, a, a essentially a 3PL transaction where they shipped it on our behalf, why not just complete the process automatically and, and only uh, let a user uh, interact with it when there are exceptions. For an FBM order, the rule essentially says when Amazon says that it is unshipped, so after Amazon has everything in place and we are, we as the seller are authorized to ship an FBM order, they will tell us that it has an, a status of unshipped. So you see in this case, we only want it to uh, create the, the sales order and, uh, and not release it or post it. We want a human to be able to look at that. So let's see how we're progressing on the automation. So let's just see what we have when we're looking at the channel orders. Oh, and by the way, uh, normally this information would show up, be, but because this is live information from Amazon, in other words, these are real orders, uh, I have masked out uh, the real buyer's names uh, and the order IDs. So right off the bat, we see that we have pending orders here. Uh, when the order status is pending from Amazon, they do not return the customer information, but we do know that there's an order out there and we could get the, uh, the items that, uh, that were associated with that order. Here we have a uh, status that is shipped on this line and our automation, our automation rule said, just go ahead and create the sales order and go ahead and uh, invoice and post it. So that is what we did. And so our internal order status says that this is complete. So let's just take a look at that real, real quick. If we look at the channel order information that came in, um, this is what the sales channel order card looks like. So it's similar to a NAV sales order, only this is the information that came from the channel. Uh, has our general information, the uh, Amazon order ID, uh, the, uh, the buyer's email, 
and the buyer's name. We can see over here, this is part of the status. This is when it was ordered, uh, which this was ordered several days ago. Uh, it is now considered complete. Our NAV sales order status is archived and this was our NAV uh, order number. Here's the lines that were that were part of that. And this is part, part of the integration still needs to be updated. That line really is shipped. So let's um, just go ahead and look. And we can look at the archived uh, sales order. So this is a standard NAV screen that we're just opening up. And once again, we have the name and, and address and external document number masked, but this is pretty much the same as a normal uh, uh, archive sales order that's already been pat uh, already been posted. We could see that there are um, posted documents associated with it. So here, uh, if you remember, the, the database was empty. Now we have essentially all these uh, sales shipments out there. And when we go back to the channel orders, let's, let's look and see if we can find some other statuses. So here's an order that was an FBA order. We could have received it. It could have been a pending status if we would have been bringing this down over time. But at some point in time, it became canceled. So we recognize that and now uh, we will not allow sales order processing for this order since it was canceled. So maybe if we do it this way, this is one of the things that I wanted to show is uh, we have FBA orders and these are the FBM orders. So uh, this customer gets by far more F FBA orders than they do uh, FBM orders, as you can see. And uh, all those posted shipments were FBA orders since we felt comfortable posting the shipment because Amazon says that they shipped it. So, but these FBM orders are different. This is something now that we need to do. We need to, uh, to ship this to the customer uh, that's associated with it. So if we look at one of these uh, channel orders, we can see uh, this is the item number as it uh, existed, um, as it came from Amazon. So this is what Amazon knows the, the order number as, and this is the description that they return. Here's the price. But let's just go and show the NAV document because our rule said that we would create a NAV sales order from this. So now we can see that this number over here is slightly different and it also has a variant code. So what happens when it goes through the sales order create process is it's using the standard NAV cross-references to be able to equate what Amazon knows this item as to our um, NAV item number and variant code. Okay, we knew to bring this from this location because that's what we had the uh, um, that sales order uh, tied to what location code? Our, I'm sorry, our our sale, our sales channel record, and it's pretty much pretty standard from here. Uh, bring it in. We actually did create a uh, customer uh, that is unique to the Amazon buyer's email address. So we will uh, keep these customers, and we will know when they repeat buy. Amazon does allow us to contact them. So thanks for watching. Uh, hope the NAV community uh, sees, sees some value in this. And uh, hopefully we'll be getting some other blogs out that uh, show more of the integration in the future. Thanks.